Today's lesson is on section 1.2 in your textbook. And our first uh, example is going to be to evaluate negative 8 plus 5 times the quantity 1 minus negative 3, the quantity cubed. To evaluate this numerical expression, we want to use the order of operations. And the first step in our order of operations is to remove grouping symbols innermost first. So we will start <coughs> by subtracting inside parentheses, but we don't subtract in algebra, we add the opposite. So inside parentheses this becomes negative 8 plus 5 times the quantity 1, so we don't subtract, we add, and the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. That's sum cubed. Okay, so we've removed uh, grouping symbols by now adding inside parentheses. 1 plus 3 is 4, So we have negative 8 plus 5 times 4 cubed. Second step in our order of operations is to evaluate powers. We have a power. We have 4 raised to the third power. We have 4 cubed, which has a value of 64. Okay. Then the third step in our uh, order of operations is to multiply and divide, working left to right. Well. <coughs> We only have multiplication, 5 times 64, so we'll take care of that. 5 times 64, 5 times 4 is 20. Carry that 2, so we're going to get 32, 320. And the last step then uh, is step 4, add and subtract working left to right. So we're going to add negative 8 to positive 320. We have more positives than negatives. We get a positive 312 as an answer. Now because of the order of operations, we're all going to get the, the same result. Okay, our second uh, example is to evaluate negative 4x squared plus 6x minus 5 when x equals negative 3. Okay, this is an algebraic expression that we're going to evaluate and the difference between an algebraic expression and a numerical expression is that um, variable x. We want to replace x with negative 3, so let's do that first. Wherever we find x in our uh, algebraic expression, we'll replace it with a negative 3. Okay, now we have a numerical expression that we can use the order of operations on again uh, to evaluate. We have no grouping symbols with operations in them uh, to remove, so we'll uh, go right to step two, which is to get rid of any uh, powers. We have negative three raised to the second power. We have negative three squared. Negative three squared is negative three times negative three, or positive nine. And then we have plus 6 times negative 3 minus 5. Okay, step 3 of the order of operations, remember, says to uh, multiply and divide, working left to right. So the first multiplication problem we come to is negative 4 times 9, and that's negative 36. Okay, next uh, multiplication uh, problem is negative 3 times 6, so we get negative 18. And we have minus 5 at the end. Okay, so our last step in our order of operations is to add and subtract, working left to right. We're adding three negative values here, so we're going to get a total of negatives. Um, so we get 14, 19, and looks like negative 59 altogether. Okay, the third example. Uh, that we're going to look at is this. You have $55 to buy DVDs that cost $12 each. Write an expression for how much money you have left after buying n discs. Evaluate the expression when n equals 3 
and n equals 4. We actually have three problems here. Our first problem is to write an expression, and then our second problem is to evaluate that expression when n equals 3, and our third problem is to evaluate the expression when n equals 4. So let's start with the first part of this problem, and let's write an expression for how much money you have left after buying n dis. Well, if you start with $55, and you subtract the cost of n dis, we can figure the cost of n dis by multiplying 12 times n. n is the number of dis times $12 each. That product will give us the total cost for n dis. We're going to take that away from 55 in order to find out how much money we have left. So there's our expression, 55 minus 12n. Now in the second part of this problem, that's a 2. Uh, we're going to uh, evaluate when n equals 3. That means we're going to purchase 3 dis. So 55 minus 12 times 3 is going to give us 55. Using that order of operations, again, we're going to multiply before we add. So negative 12 times 3 is negative 36. And we'll add, <coughs> because remember we don't subtract in algebra, we add the opposite. So we're really um, adding negative 36 to positive 55 and getting what? Let's see. 19. So uh, to answer the question, evaluate the expression when n equals 3, we're going to have $19 left when we buy those three discs. Okay, the third part of the problem now is to evaluate the expression when n equals 4, or to find out how much money is left when you purchase 4 discs. So I'm going to let you uh, solve that problem in your homework. Um, go ahead and let n equal 4 in our expression 55 minus 12n in your uh, notes for this video. Okay, our fourth example is to simplify 3 times the quantity x minus 2 minus 5 times the quantity x minus 8. Okay, well, we can't simplify inside parentheses because we have a variable. We don't have like terms inside parentheses, so we can't subtract 2 from x. What we need to do first when we simplify this expression is to distribute and get rid of parentheses. We need to use the distributive property. So we'll multiply that 3 out front to both terms inside parentheses. And then in this product, we'll multiply negative 5 to both terms inside parentheses. Okay, so let's distribute. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Now negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And negative 5 times ne negative 8 is positive 40. My pen is acting up, so let's just get rid of this. Okay, and write 40, positive 40. Okay. So we've gotten rid of parentheses. Now what we want to do is add like terms. We have x terms that we can add together. Those are like terms. 3x plus negative 5x. We have two more negatives than positives, so altogether we get negative 2x. When we add like terms, variable terms, all we have to do is add those coefficients, and that's how many x's we have. Okay, now we can go back and we can add our constant terms. Those are also like terms. So negative 6 and positive 40 is going to give us positive 34. Okay, so when we simplify this expression, we get negative 2x plus 34, a variable term and a constant term. Okay, and our Fifth example today 
is to write and simplify an expression for the total amount of juice in 15 cans if some hold 8 ounces and some 12 ounces. What is the total amount of juice if 9 of the cans hold 8 ounces? Okay, in this problem there's two parts. Uh, the first part is to write and simplify an expression and the second part is to evaluate that expression when our variable equals 9. So they don't tell us what to use for a variable, so our first job is to assign variables. So let's let, let's let x equal the number of 8 ounce cans. And then uh, we can let 15 minus x, because there's a total of 15 cans and x of them are 8 ounce cans, we can let 15 minus x equal the number of 12 ounce cans. Okay, so we're ready to write an expression um, for the total amount of juice in those 15 cans. So let's multiply 8 times x and that'll give us the total amount of juice in um, 8 ounce cans. There's x of them, so if we multiply we'll get the total amount of juice in the 8 ounce cans. And then we'd have to multiply 12 times the number of 12 ounce cans, which is 15 minus x. in order to get the total juice in the 12 ounce cans. Add them together to get the uh, total juice uh, in both cans, in all 15 cans. Well, this expression is not in uh, simplest form, so we'll go ahead and distribute, get rid of parentheses again, and add like terms to get it in simplest form. So 8x and then 12 times 15 is going to give us what? I'm going to take it to the side here and multiply. 12 times 15, so I'm going to get 10, 3, and then 15, so I'm going to get 180 altogether. Okay, so plus 180, and then 12 times negative x is negative 12x. Okay, adding like terms, 8x and negative 12x. We have more negatives than positives, so I'm going to get negative 4x plus 180 for our expression in simplest form. Okay, that's the first part of this problem. And now the second part, remember, asked us what is the total amount of juice in nine of the cans, if nine of the cans hold eight ounces. So now we're going to let our variable x because that's the number of 8 ounce cans, we're going to let x equal 9 and evaluate. So we have negative 4 times 9 plus 180. Okay, so I multiply and get negative 36 and then last we're going to add negative 36 to 180. More positives than negatives, so I'm going to get 4, 4, 1 when I subtract 144. Now we need a label on our answer here. What is the total amount of juice if 9 of the cans hold 8 ounces? 144 ounces. Okay, in those 15 cans. Okay, uh, I want you to include in your notes of this video uh, guided practice problems 2 through 14, even problems only, found on pages 11 and 12 of your textbook.